Hey guys, welcome to the channel. In this video, I wanted to give you guys a look at three generations of NVIDIA graphics cards here. We have the NVIDIA 1070 Ti, the 2080 Ti, and the all-new NVIDIA 3090. To start, let's have a look at the specifications of the PC that all three of these cards were tested on. You can have a look at that here in the background, and while you do, I'll mention that this system was built for the NVIDIA 3000 series when I heard it was being announced. And the only real weak point in the system as it stands right now is the Ryzen 9 3900X, which was the best one available at the time. In fact, right after I purchased this, the 3950 came out. But that's not a big deal because this was kind of also built in anticipation of the 5000 Ryzen CPUs, which once the 5950X comes out, this system will sort of be complete. If I wasn't anticipating the 5000 series Ryzen processors coming out, I probably would have built this with an Intel chipset. But because of that anticipation, that's why I went with the AMD platform. Also important is the settings within Microsoft Flight Simulator that I was using, and I'll display those here. By no means are these the most optimal setting for any three of these cards, but I wanted to ensure that two things. Number one, all of the settings were identical across all three cards so that you could see a direct comparison. And number two, that it would be easy for you to easily duplicate these settings on your setup to see how they compare against these cards if you wanted to do so. By sort of playing with these settings just a little bit, you can greatly increase the performance of all three of these cards while not by any means reducing the quality that you get uh, out of them. Uh, most of the videos that I made in the beginning of my channel here were all done on the 1070 Ti and the later videos up to this point were all done on the 2080 Ti and if you, I usually leave the, G, or the uh, frames per second up in the top left corner you can see that I get much better frames per second in most of those videos than I do in this comparison here. So by no means are these settings optimal, but they are the settings I used for us to compare the three cards against each other. Now, how I did this is very simple. All I did was select the global rendering quality, either high-end settings or ultra settings, and I didn't change any of the settings that came along with those presets, so it's either either high or ultra, and then the only thing I changed between the three different comparisons that you'll see for both high and ultra is the render scaling. So every single comparison here is at 4K uh, resolution for screen settings, as you can see the full screen resolution, and then I would change render scaling from 50%, which is essentially 1080p, to 70%, which is just shy of 2K, and then 100%, which is true uh, 4K, no render scaling at all. So it's a, a true four native uh, 4K resolution. And I did that for both high and ultra. So what I ended up getting was essentially six different settings uh, from 50, 70, and 100 on high and 50, 70, and 100 on ultra for three different cards. And I put those side by side on the screen for you to see. Let's have a look at the first. As you can see here, the 1070 holds up really well, 40 frames a second, and the 2080 and the 3090, both um, in the low to mid 50s. At these lower 1080p resolutions, you're not going to see the advantage that the 39 gives you, um, mostly because at this point, we're very much CPU limited. When I was talking to you earlier about the 3900X, the AMD uh, chipset and uh, CPU, that's actually my limiting factor here. So you're not gonna be pushing higher frames per second unless you start to optimize for being CPU limited. So lowering some of the things uh, in the settings that are highly reliant on the CPU. And once you do that, then you'll start seeing the 39, uh, 3090 pull away from the 2080 Ti. But in this case with the presets, everything on higher ultra, uh, you see this a lot until you get into the full non-render scaled native 4K resolutions. You, you don't really see the 3090. In fact, it's not working at all. Uh, the fan's barely even on. And uh, if you look at the um, task manager, it's, it's barely doing anything. So this is definitely not taking advantage of the 3090 at, at 1080p. And uh, you can clearly see that with the 2080 Ti sometimes even showing uh, higher frames than the 3090 is. It's pretty much the same story at uh, 2K here. 
the 3090 still isn't working very hard and you can see the 1070 is just starting to get into the territory where I find the simulator isn't playable anymore. Uh, high 20s is just bearable in my opinion, but it's not very nice to play. Um, I, I feel like it starts getting nice to play around mid 30s and up. Anything 30 frames per second or lower and it starts sort of making me a little bit more nauseous. Now keep in mind that at 1080p, this effect is less noticeable, quite a bit so in fact, um, than it is at 4K, no render scaling. So at a native 4K at 30 frames a second, I notice this effect a lot. And at 25 frames a second at 1080p, I barely notice it. So it's, it's funny how the resolution plays a factor on the frames per second here, but at 4K native, which is what I'm trying to target here, I don't find anything under 30 frames per second playable. So the 1070 Ti, even though we're at 2K right now, is clearly not gonna hold up well at 4K with the standard high settings. So let's take a look now at the same three cards and a on the high preset with uh, 4K native resolution here. So now we can see that the 1070 Ti uh, can't keep up. The 2080 Ti is just bearable. Um, it, it's still not very nice to play at these frames per second uh, in a full 4K setting. And this is where you can clearly see the 3090 pulling away with 50% um, or more performance increase over the 2080 Ti, which is no slouch. So it's not until you get up into these full native 4K resolutions that you're going to see the NVIDIA 3090, uh, and I'm assuming uh, with that, the 3000 series in general, like the 3080, pull ahead. The 3070 is really a different uh, beast in a little bit of ways because it's uh, comparable to the 2080 Ti, according to people, um, except it uh, is a lot cheaper. So it's it's the value on the 30 uh, the 3070 is going to be, I think, a great card if you can get a hold of one. That on top of NVIDIA's DLSS technology, even if AMD 6000 series comes out and can go toe to toe with the 3090, unless they come up with something like DLSS. Uh, now I know that doesn't mean a whole lot in Flight Simulator right now, but in a lot of games outside of uh, Flight Sim, that's gonna be huge. And um, at 4K, if you're trying to target 4K, clearly right now the 3090 is king. With that, here we have the exact same set of render scaling tests now, but we're on ultra presets. So again, at 1080p essentially, the 1070 Ti holds up really well. I'm really impressed with these 10 series cards. Um, that was a generation of cards that uh, held up extremely well. They were way ahead of their time when they were released. And the fact that I can be playing um, this brand new flight sim on a 10 series TI, that, that, that's pretty amazing in my, in my opinion. If you're looking to build a budget PC, I think these are going to start flooding the markets, the 1070s and the 1080s. And like I said, take a look at my first videos that I did uh, up to this point, and you'll see plenty of great 4K resolutions that I um, just, you know, played with the settings enough to get it running easily into the 45 frames per second, and it was quite enjoyable. So it's an impressive little card. Um, at ultra settings, you can see the 3090 pulling away from the 2080 Ti just by a few frames here and there. Obviously, at this point, we're starting to push a little bit more effects on top of these pixels, um, but it's still CPU limited. If you look at the 3090 in Task Manager, it's not it's not working very much, very hard at all. And as we move to the sort of just shy of 2K resolution in the ultra presets. Again, you can see um, the 3090 again isn't working that, that hard compared to the 2080. And it, it's keeping up, they're, they're both the same. So again, when the 5000 series Ryzen's come out, that will help a lot with this. But really what you need to be doing here is limiting some of the items in the settings that limit this, uh, that are heavy reliant on the CPU. And once you do that, it gives room for the NVIDIA to, to really take over and do what it's designed to do. Right now, it's just not being fed enough information from the CPU to draw more frames. So it's just keeping up with the CPU and, and chugging along. 
but again the 3090 really shines when you start to try and push more pixels at 4k uh, or sort of remove some of those limiting cpu factors in this case i'm still impressed that the 1070 ti is doing anything to be honest this is uh ultra presets at 2k and it's running 23 frames a second that being said i couldn't play at those frames per second at this point uh, this was at the point at which the 1070 ti when i was running it to do this test it was starting to give me a headache uh even at these even at 2k at 22 frames a second uh, i was actually not looking at the screen a lot of the time because i, I couldn't stand it and here we go, this is Microsoft Flight Simulator, everything maxed out. So this is full native 4K, 100 render scaling. Technically, I guess we could have pushed the render scaling to 200 if we wanted to max it out. So that's the only setting that isn't on max right now is that it's not oversampling. So we're just at a full native 4K right now. And the 1070 Ti, you, uh, it doesn't look so bad here on YouTube, but I promise you this was making me nauseous. So I, I didn't record it for very long. I finally turned it off. The 2080 Ti, also not playable in my opinion at 4K 100 because this effect is way more noticeable at a full native um, 4K resolution, but holding up pretty well, all things considered. I mean, this is uh, last generation's card. Um, like I said though, the 2080 Ti is no slouch, but I, I couldn't really get over 30 frames per second and you got to remember that although Toronto is a fairly heavy uh, city, there are heavier cities like New York. I mean, there are areas of this sim that bog this down even more than Toronto. So I picked sort of an area that is pretty heavy on the scenery, but not the worst. Um, that being said, with the 2080 Ti, you do, um, you know, you, you, you're a little bit more efficient in your settings and you play around with them a little bit more and you'll easily get 40, 45 frames per second out of the 2080 Ti on most settings ultra at 4K 100. But I, I found the sweet spot with the 2080 Ti personally was at 4K with 80 render scaling and many of the ultra settings on high like water turned down and and some reflections and shadows and you sort of bump some of those things down that aren't so noticeable um, as some of the other settings and it still looked great and held up really well but did jump down past 30 sometimes when you get into heavier areas so with that the 3090 uh, will just jump to it full screen now uh, I haven't had any time to play with the settings on this yet. I literally threw this into the computer um, this afternoon and did these tests because I had already done these for the other cards that I had in the system. So I went ahead and did all the same preset tests so that I could release this video. And I think what I'll do next is release a video of the 3090 um, after I've sort of played around with it and gotten all the settings to where I feel they're at their most efficient. But just with the straight ultra presets at 4K um, native uh, on ultra, this is essentially what we're getting. And, I, and it was sort of a mid to high 30s. It would go uh, over 40s uh, if I wasn't in around Toronto. Um, but this is, this is sort of what I'm getting. That being said, task manager, this thing wasn't 100%. So clearly it's CPU limited, and that's why I'm looking forward to the Ryzen 5000 series uh, CPUs so that we can get that in here and see what um, we can push out of this thing. Uh, now, the real question will be, will it still be CPU limited even with the 5950X that's upcoming um, as this, this game? Uh, even Microsoft and Asobo have come out and said that they are working on getting this uh, um, less CPU limited. Now, a big portion of this is going to be their move to DirectX 12. And that's almost every developer at this point going to either Vulkan uh, or DirectX 12, which handles this type of thing in a very different way and allows multi-core CPUs to um, essentially at the end of the day, DirectX 12 or Vulkan, Microsoft obviously going with DirectX 12 route, uh, is going to eliminate this whole main thread limiting uh, of these simulators. So that will be very interesting to see um, when they release that, how that affects uh, you know, graphics cards like the 3090, which can handle uh, way more right now than the CPU is capable of throwing at them. 
With that, guys, uh, I know it's a little bit of a different video than I'm used to throwing up on my channel, but it's definitely Microsoft Flight Simulator related, and uh, I know there's a lot of hype around the different NVIDIA cards and a lot of people building new systems now on all types of budgets. So I hope you enjoyed. That being said, when the AMD um, GPUs come out, the 6900 XT is kind of what I'm eyeballing. So I will do a comparison against the 6900 XT and the 3090 in Microsoft Flight Simulator as soon as I'm able to get one. I actually had a really hard time getting a 3090, but it finally came in today. So I hope you've enjoyed. Thanks a lot, guys, and I hope to see you in the next video.